the PlayStation is cool. Well, at least that's the message Sony tried to get across to gamers in the late 90s and early 2000s. Their systems weren't your kid brother's Nintendo. They were the edgy, edgy. full-on mature system for the new millennium. However, as eager as Sony were to get this message across over the intervening years, their rather ham-fisted approach did come back to bite them in the arse on several occasions, often with hilarious or even downright embarrassing consequences. So this episode, we take a look at these marketing mishaps, these advertising aberrations, and these publicity pratfalls. As I say, but hello you. I'm Guru Larry, and I welcome you to Fact Hunt, Sony's top five disastrous marketing fails. But before the fun begins, don't forget to click that subscribe button as well as the notification bell to be first to see future Fact Hunt episodes. And away we go! In 1993, Sony purchased Cygnosis, the long-running Amiga developer, renowned for its fresh style and all its box art looking like mid-80s prog rock album covers. At their office on the Liverpool docks, they were forever coming up with cutting-edge titles. One of which was Wipeout, a racer set in 2052 in which players raced around an anti-gravity futuristic racing league. It was a sort of souped-up F-Zero, featuring excellent physics and graphics, and a brilliant launch title for the PlayStation in the West. Sony's marketing strategy in Europe at the time was heavily influenced by manager Jeff Glendening, Glenn Denning's idea was that they should specifically market the PlayStation towards young adults, thinking that they'd have more disposable income than children, to whom games consoles had previously been targeted. They wanted to associate the PlayStation with what was cool with that demographic at the time, and identified the growing underground club scene, in part due to Glenn Denning's time with rave culture in the 80s. They contacted nightclubs and festival promoters directly, installing dedicated PlayStation areas in these venues, ending up with over 52 clubs in the UK alone that had a PlayStation room. This tactic surprisingly worked, and the PlayStation was able to successfully embed itself into this youth culture. When Wipeout was being developed, it managed to sync almost perfectly with this approach. The game featured music by the Chemical Brothers, Left Field and Orbital, among others, which Cygnosis was able to do by leaning on Sony's musical division. Combine this with its slick style, icons and symbols developed by the stylish design studio Designers Republic, and Sony had on their hands a game which they could put just about anywhere and it would look ace. However, there was, of course, one problem with this approach. Sony associating itself with the club scene was all well and good for people that went to clubs, but it caused the more conservative public to start associating Sony and the PlayStation with the more negative aspects of clubbing. Youth culture has never been liked by certain generations, and in this case, they thought that these clubs were full of people off their face on drugs and booze. Which of course, they were, but it wasn't the PlayStation's fault. So, the design studio which came up with a lot of the artwork for Wipeout, Designers Republic, came up with a new poster to help advertise the game. And this is that poster. Yeah, so what can we say about this? It features a young Sarah Cox and some other bloke, slumped over and glassy-eyed, bloody-nosed and looking in no particular direction. According to Ian Anderson, one of the people that designed this poster, the main idea was to depict speed however you want to interpret that. He said that they wanted to be edgy and push boundaries, provoke a response from people predisposed to be offended and raise the profile of the game. And it did that. All of those things. The Sun newspaper hated the poster, stating that an ad for a Sony computer game aimed at kids as young as three had been blasted by glamorizing drugs. Yes, they really said that. The part about the game being aimed at kids as young as three is because the age rating for the game was just that, and there was nothing controversial in the game itself, almost as if they were stating that the game should be an 18 because of this poster. They even printed a quote by a politician who called it an outrage. 
The funny thing about this outrage is there was no real evidence that the poster was ever actually printed in poster form. It seemed to appear in a few gaming magazines and that was about it. The outrage was practically made up and it gave free publicity to an advertising campaign which most people would never have seen otherwise. There were later revisions of the image which cleaned up some of the blood because even the gaming press were put off by it. However, it had the intended effect. Wipeout was a hit and Sony had established itself as a company willing to upset the status quo. Whilst the previous entry was an earnest attempt to be cool and edgy, this next one was just a bit of a dick move. In the mid 2000s, the idea of viral marketing was starting to embed itself in the consciousness of ad agencies everywhere. Instead of spending out a huge budget on a big campaign, instead they could just do something small. Which, through the power of the internet, regular people would go on to share themselves, saving the company a load of money and potentially being far more effective. Sony cottoned on to this and attempted to craft a PSP campaign with the intent purpose to become viral and spread the message. It became viral alright, but not because it was good. Oh no, it was an absolute train wreck. In November 2006, a website popped up on the internet called All I Want For Christmas Is A PSP.com.blog. It seemed to depict a quest of a young man called Charlie who wanted to help his buddy Jeremy get a PSP for Christmas. It was, however, the definition of cringeworthy, with everything written in how adults think kids talk over text. Every blog post attempting to detail the PSP selling points in an advertiser-friendly way, while still maintaining the facade of being a fan site. It would even say things like, consider us your own personal PSP hype machine, here to help you wage a holiday assault on your parents. You're spelt you are. Good old mid-2000s. As you can probably guess, it was rumbled pretty immediately, with many people thinking it was in really poor taste to try and hide advertising like this. But more so, it was a pretty pathetic attempt to be called by a company that really should have known better. Some people were generally very angry that Sony was attempting to trick people, whilst others just couldn't take their eyes off the car crash it was becoming. The site even tried to deny the allegations at one point, with the fictional character Charlie posting gems such as Yo, where all you haters come from? Just cause you ain't feeling the flow of the PSP don't mean it's some mad fake website on thumb. You all be tripping! The funny thing about it was the website was actually registered to the large advertising agency Zipper Tony, who had been known to work with Sony. So it was pretty clear what was happening. Sony even tried to squirm out of the whole ordeal with a lame apology stating they were trying to be too clever and that they had been busted. It was quietly removed and they attempted to hide it forever. Too red-faced to admit that it had actually been a real thing. What has gone down in the annals of internet history though, even more so than the attempt to fraudulently advertise a product, was the music videos. They decided to pitch these characters as something of hip-hop wannabes who were creating their own videos leading to this absolute gem. Can words even describe what we've just witnessed? It's one of the worst things ever created. And I don't just mean by Sony. They try to erase it from history, but they can't. The internet never forgets. All I want for Christmas is my PSP. Wanna play when I'm walking down the street. Many companies have avoided making religious overtones in any of their advertising, as the religious community are not particularly well known for their chilled out attitude towards the use of its holy iconography in order to peddle some goods. Sony had fallen foul of this a few times, posting the infamous Lara Christ picture in Italy which did not go down well with Christians at all. But did they learn from that mistake? No, no they didn't, 
Back in the mid-2000s, Sony was celebrating 10 years since the launch of the PlayStation, with various advertising campaigns throughout the world. For their campaign in Italy, they decided to go with something they were sure Italians would love. A man wearing a crown of thorns. Only, instead of thorns, it's PlayStation buttons. They were playing on the phrase 10 years of passion, conflating it with the passion of the Christ. So, what's the big deal, I hear you ask? It's just a man wearing a hat. Well, Italy just happens to be home to a fairly large Catholic community. And they were not happy about their Lord and Saviour being teased in this way. Feeling a little protective over the Big J, the Christian news in Italy went into overdrive, with Antonio Shortino, editor of Familia Christiana, stating that this time they've gone too far, and that if this had concerned Islam, there would have been a really strong reaction. These reactions were later printed in the national paper Corriere della Sera, and the outrage went as far as the Vatican itself, with the Cardinal Ursillo Tonini stating that it was an irrelevant mockery and that the advert displays a lack of taste which conceals a lack of respect. Kids shouldn't be induced into believing that the Passion of Christ is a game. It's funny how a simple little picture like this can get people so wound up. They had managed to anger certain people to the point in which they thought that this image could damage their flock's belief, when in reality it was just a slightly misjudged reference. Sony, of course, published an apology and stopped the ad, stating that it had been misunderstood. I suppose it could have been worse. They could have given away a Grand Touring smo shroud with the console. Anyone? Yeah, that pun did work better in my head. I'll, I'll get the code. The PSP probably had one of the worst ad campaigns of all time. Sony was desperately attempting to recapture the spirit of the PlayStation 1 campaign, wanting to be all cool and edgy like, but in an internet world. However, as we saw with their Christmas campaign, they constantly fell on their ass. With the Christmas campaign, if you were being very kind, you could just say it was a bad idea from people that should have known better. This one, though, was way, way worse. The PSP was a very capable system, and it had some great games, so it should have been simple for Sony to advertise. All they had to do was talk about the graphical prowess, the storage, the internet capabilities, and so on. They had so much to work with. But nope, instead, they decided to put up posters in various train stations, tempting people to jump in front of trains. So, here you have the picture of one of the signs. It states, Take a running jump here. This was placed in the Manchester Underground, and potentially in the London Underground as well. And to a casual observer who didn't know what the PSP was, and even those that did, it was absolutely morbid, promoting suicide in a suicide hotspot. Workers on platforms were so disgusted, they even took to covering up the poster themselves, thinking that the message was disgusting. The thing is, this was just the tip of the iceberg for the campaign. They plastered them around the country, with some saying things like, spend a night in Paris, or strong language and sings of a sexual nature. But the one that really got on people's goats was a gigantic 100 foot billboard that stated, your girlfriend's white bits here. For those unaware of what that means, it refers to the places on a lady's body likely to be untanned. In all fairness, Engage also had posters like this about spending a night with Lara, but when you have a console modelled after Goatsy, you can guess that they didn't really catch on either. This idea was all concocted by the agency TBWA, who after complaints about the campaign started popping up, said it was simply supposed to be a tongue-in-cheek way to communicate the PSP's functions, letting you know you could view photos on it or watch movies. Ultimately, Sony did remove the most offensive ones, but was this the final time they would make such a big mistake with the PSP? Oh no. So far on this list, we've had drugs, suicide, religious hatred, and fraudulent activity. So it's only right we complete the world's worst game of bingo with some classic racism. 
around a year after the launch of the PSP. Sony were considering launching a white version and wanted to build up some momentum by creating a campaign around it. They hired the agency TBWA, which in itself was a bad decision considering what they'd already done in the past. But the direction for the campaign was simply to show the contrast between the black of the old design and the white of the new one. And this is what they came up with. Let's take a look at this billboard then. It contains two ladies having a bit of a barney. One of them white and one of them black with the slogan, white is coming. It doesn't take a genius to see what connotations people would take away from this design and instantly people were outraged. The most obvious connection people made was to slavery with the billboard seemingly depicting a white person dominating a black person as shown by her hands on her neck. The immediate reaction to this came from the internet, with smaller websites like Digital Battle posting about it first before getting picked up by bigger ones like Kotaku and Joystick. Initially, these websites struck a more cautious tone, wanted to see what their audiences thought before they all clearly thought it was racist. But it wasn't long until regular media outlets started running the story, with CNN Money in the United States the Sydney Morning Herald in Australia and The Guardian in the UK publishing articles on it, to name but a few. They even got some pretty harsh words from various figures around the world, with the president of the San Jose NARPT stating that the image conjures up bad memories of when stereotypical and offensive images of people of colour were accepted means of selling a product, with these sort of comments being echoed by commentators and politicians from around the Western Hemisphere. So what could Sony say in the midst of all of this? Well, at first they went for some damage control and tried to deny the whole thing. They said it was just one particular image out of an album of a hundred, all set out in order to show the contrast between white and black. However, that doesn't really explain why this was the one image they decided to plaster across a billboard and each image would have to stand out on its own as most people would never see the whole photo shoot. Sony later published another apology stating that we recognise that the subject matter of one specific image may have caused concern in some countries not directly affected by the advertising. As a result we have now withdrawn the campaign. You'll notice that they were careful there to only apologise to that image, sticking to the line that the rest of the shoots was fine. They also allude to the fact that much of the outrage happened outside of the country that billboard was in, and that was actually true. Whilst the billboard was in the Netherlands, the Dutch media didn't seem particularly bothered by the whole thing. In fact, most of their media just reported that there was outrage in other countries at the billboard, and some seem to just be happy that the Netherlands was appearing in international news. So, what have we learned today? Well, when you're a global company, there's no such thing as local advertising. Sometimes being edgy and pushing the line only results in the line pushing back. But I bet you're wondering, did any of this have a negative effect on sales? No, it got them into the news and the products into people's minds. So ultimately, it did the job. Hello you! Thanks ever so much for watching! Don't forget to subscribe to be first to see future episodes, click on the bell if you already are to remain notified, and be sure to check out my other videos. And if you want to be super awesome, check out my Patreon, where you can not only see videos up to a week early, but also completely ad and sponsorship free. But thanks ever so much again for watching, and I'll be seeing you next time. Tara for now.